Hello guys and welcome back to my channel but today we won't be discussing anything about technical interview rather we will be discussing something that have blown my mind today. So over here you know that in our last tutorial over there I have cloned many of the application starting from the Facebook still our Instagram I have cloned each and every component over there. So while developing the REST API for any of the service, if you have noticed, I normally use the Eclipse for the development purpose. Because of the fact our Visual Studio code doesn't provide enough infrastructure to create the REST API services. But I can bet you after watching this video, you will not open the Eclipse application in your life. Because Visual Studio code have released some of the extension which can easily replace Eclipse by anyhow. So without wasting much time, let's see what are the extension you need to have on this Visual Studio code so that you can easily replace Eclipse and not only that you can also do Eclipse Postman service for checking your REST APIs. So actually frankly telling, I am a huge fan of this Visual Studio code because over here you can see lot of color coding and all this stuff which actually makes the coding quite fun and easy to do. Because if you see the normal Eclipse that is quite boring where you have to write some codes in, and this comes on a black structure and with a white background though they have came up with some of the dark, darker mode and lighter mode but it's not too much friendly to use. But over here today I will show you that with the help of this Visual Studio code how easily you can create any of the REST API service and not only that you can also test those REST API service without using the Postman service. So without wasting much time, let's see how we will do it. So if you have followed me while I was implementing this REST API, you have seen that I normally start our project from this application which is Spring Initializer where we start with creating the basic Spring project which is actually a Maven project. So over here if you know, to create a Spring project, we have to first select the project as a Maven project, then we have to select Java as our language and after that over here we have to select the snapshot version that is the Springboard version which we want to select and after that we provide few of the metadata and everything and once we are done with providing all this metadata we go to our dependencies and over here we select all the dependencies that we need for building our application and once we are set with everything we click on generate button over here and this Spring Initializer project creates a package which is a zip file from where we can start our development and after that what we do? We import this project that is this zip into our Eclipse application over there we create the REST APIs and everything and then once we are done with creating the REST API we go to the Postman services to check each and every HTTP endpoints which we have implemented over there. So if you just see we do a lot of things to implement a simple REST API service. So we start from building the application from this Spring Initializer then we import the file in Eclipse then once we are done we go to the Postman application and they run and test and all those things we have to do. But today what I will be showing you will blow your mind because with the help of a single tool you can do all of this stuff and within few minutes. So let's see how we will do each and everything over here. So to install the plugins that I am telling over here we first have to go to the marketplace that is provided in the Visual Studio and over here the first plugin or the extension that you have to install is Spring and over here you can see some of the extension are listed over here and over here you need to install the top 3 extension that is the Spring Boot Tools, the Spring Boot Initializer and the Spring Boot Dashboard and these 3 will solve a lot of problems that we normally deal with while developing the REST API. So let's install all these 3 extension over here. And once you are done over here you can see right now the install icon is not present over here which means that all the extension got installed over here. So let's see how we can leverage all this functionality. But before that I want to install one more extension and that is Thunder Client. So over here if you see this is the extension which I am talking about. So let's install and after that I will show you that with the help of this Thunder Client how you can get rid of the Postman services that we use in our daily life. So there are a lot of extensions that are already available on the visual code which can also fulfill the purpose that are served by the Postman. But over here I have found that the Thunder Client which I am telling over here is the best among the all. So let's see how we can solve all this problem together with the help of this 4 extension. 
So what is recommended that once you are done with all the installation of the extension, you just need to reload or restart the Visual Studio code so that all the extension can work flawlessly. So let's restart this Visual Studio code. So over here we have restarted the Visual Studio. Let's now see how we can create a Spring Boot application by using the extension. And over here you have to press Shift Ctrl P for Windows and Shift Command P for Mac. And over here we have to select the first option and that is the Spring Initializer. So let's select it over here. And over here you can see just like our Spring Initializer website, here also we are getting the option to select the Spring Boot snapshot. So over here within the Visual Studio code you will see that whatever the options and the setup that we have selected over here within the Spring Initializer site come automatically within the Visual Code application. So let's go over here and let's create our first application from the Visual Studio code. So let's select the snapshot as 2.5.0 and over here you can see it's asking for the language in which we want to code. So let's select the language as Java and over here you can see we are given the provision of providing a project group ID. So let's give a group ID over here. Let's give it as a demo project and let's proceed further. Let's click on enter and over here we have to provide the artifact ID for this project. So let's also name it as a demo project and let's click on enter. So now over here you can see it's asking for the package type like this. So let's select over here as jar and let's select the Java version as 11. So we are done with creating the first Spring Boot application over here. Now it's time to select the dependencies from here. So now you can see from here we can also select the dependencies that we need to have into our project. So let's select few of the dependencies from here. So the first dependency I will be selecting is the Spring Tool Dev Tool. Then I will be selecting the Spring Wave. So I think these two dependencies are fine for creating this demo project. So let's click on enter and as soon as I clicked on enter you can see it's asking for a directory where I want to save this project. So over here the Visual Studio code has automatically created an entire Spring Boot application without us worrying about any single line of code. So let's save it somewhere over here. So I'll create a directory over here as a demo project. And let's place the generated folder over here. And over here you can see the project is getting created over here. So let's click on open. And bingo you can see with the help of this Visual Studio code we have created our entire Spring Boot application over here. Starting with the creation of the pom.xml till the creation of the main class over here. And you will be glad to know over here creating a REST API is damn easy. And not only that with the help of this three extension you can also run your microservices within this application. So just for example, let's create a controller class over here and let me show you how the things are working over here. So let me create a file called as controller. So I will click over here and click on new file. So let's create a controller class and create. And over here you will see how easy it is to create and annotate a class with the controller and the service class. So let's click on add the rate and over here you can see it's giving with all the annotation that is supported by a class. So let's select the REST controller over here and also let's create a request mapping for it. So you can see with the help of the IntelliJ it is so easy to code and type over here. So for the demo purpose I will just create two endpoints over here one with the get mapping and one with the post mapping. So let's click on add the rate get mapping and let's create a dummy function over here. So let's assume that this function returns a simple string. So let's return the string as hello world. And we have one more mapping and that is the post mapping. So let's create one more mapping that is post. And over here let's also do the same thing. So simple right? So over here you can see within few seconds we have just created a REST endpoint over here. So now let me show you some another cool functionality over here which will actually make you quite happy. So over here if you go to the main class over here you can see you can actually run the entire Spring Boot application from the Visual Studio code. 
So initially it was not supported by Visual Studio Code, but with the help of this extension, you can easily run an entire project over here. So you can see, if you go to the debug console, you can see that the project is up and running and over here it is working on port 88. So amazing. Let's now test this endpoint that we have created over here. And to change this HTTP endpoint, this time we won't be using the Postman service. Rather, what we will be doing, we will be using the extension that we have installed over here. And that is the Thunder client. So over here, if you see, we have got Thunder client icon over here. And if you go over here, you will see this looks more or less like our Postman. So over here, you can see if we click on the new request, we got a similar layout like our Postman application. So over here, let's check our first endpoint and that is the get API. So we'll write localhost 8080 slash API slash get and let's click on send. And great, you can see we got the response from our application and that is the hello world. So amazing, you can see with the help of the Visual Studio code, now you can also test the application over here. And one more amazing thing I want to show you, this application also supports each and everything that are supported by the Postman application. So over here you can see we have the header types. So anything if you want to pass in the request header, you can do it from here. Also, you can put the basic authentication side. So over here, since this application doesn't have any authentication, so it is selected as none. You can put the basic authentication like the Spring Boot authentication, where you can put your user ID and the password for the REST API authentication. Also over here, you can give the bearer token for the JWT application. And also you can test out the entire OAuth 2 functionality using this extension. So that's really cool, right? So over here, let me show you that with the help of this extension, you can also create the request body over here. So as you know, whenever we are sending a post, you need to pass some request body, right? So over here, you can see similarly, just like our postman, we have the provision of sending some of the request body over here as our request post. So since we do not have any supporting code over here, so we will skip this part. Rather, I will be also showing you that the post mapping is also supported by this extension. So let's click on post and let's change the URL to post and let's click on send. And create, you can see we are in our post block and that is post hyphen hello world. And one more interesting thing I want to show you that normally what happens in Eclipse that whenever you change any code over here, you need to save and then rerun the entire application to see whether everything is working or not. But over here, you do not need to do anything. Just save it over here. And after that, you again go to your Postman service over here and let's click on save. And create, you can see the response from our backend server got changed over here. And you have seen that I have not restarted my server after changing the code over here. So great, I believe you guys have thoroughly liked this four extension that we have used over here. So if you have any doubt regarding how to install this or from where you can download this extension, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any comments or if you have found any more extension that is helpful for you, do let me know in the comment section below. I will definitely try them and will let you know the review of those extensions. So without wasting much time, let's end this video. But if you have liked this video, do not forget to like this video and share with your friends. And if you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my side and you are always ready for your next interview. Till then, happy coding.